Aloha y bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I am your host, Richard Concepcion. Today's program is going to be about brain training with Dr. Melba Stens. She is a licensed psychology and a brain trainer. Also, she is the CEO and the owner <laughs> of Biofeedback Therapy Hawaii Clinic. She takes her time to help others who need help with PTSD, ADHD, stress, TBI, and teach and train to keep your brain in a good condition. Just like we train our body to be in a good physical condition, we should also train our brain. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, let's start the show by asking you uh, what inspired you to become a psychologist and it's such a difficult subject that is the brain. I think the brain is so interesting, so intriguing, and we still don't know it all, don't understand it completely. My father is uh, a physician, and my mother is a dietitian, so I've always been in the medical field. In the military, I was a uh, psychologist. I retired two years ago as a lieutenant colonel. And my background, my license in Hawaii, and my degrees are more work psychologies or big performance, so I help people train their brain so it works better and the behavior is better and they're happier. All right, tell me a little bit about uh, the nail you created, Biofeedback Therapy Hawaii. Thank you, so uh, I used to call it by the waves, by the brain waves or ocean waves, but I understood that some people were looking more for something specific, so I changed the name to Biofeedback Therapy Hawaii because I don't only uh, put my clients to systems, to capture their biofeedback or their biological feedback information from the brain or the body. I also talk to them and give some counseling, confidential counseling, military and others, and to and some coaching. So biofeedback just means giving feedback from the psychophysiology. Oh, that's perfect. So you mentioned that you retired from the military as a lieutenant colonel. You was born in Puerto Rico. Si. You stay here in Hawaii. Uh, to provide service to the community. Tell me a little bit about your military background and what you do for the community here in Hawaii. So I started as an enlisted orthotech because I wanted, when I was in Puerto Rico, I just wanted to move on and move on. So then later on, I finished my bachelor, my master's while I was in the military. And then when it was good enough for the system, military system, I transferred to, while I was doing my PhD, to research psychology. I've been helping a lot of people, even when I was deployed to Iraq, um, I went to Afghanistan, I was stationed in Korea, Panama. Uh, it's all about helping the pain, the psychological pain that we have by retraining, reframing. Uh, I like doing work also with Dr. Zimbardo about uh, keeping people in the present and the future more than in the past time perspective. So tell me a little bit uh about how the whole program work. So is a person in health, they call you, they contact you, and then they come in and they go through a different program that is neurofeedback, biofeedback, and uh, brain stimulation. Can you talk to me about those different areas? So yes, they can contact me uh, via email, text, phone, or my website, biofeedbacktherapyhawaii.com. And we set up an appointment. Most people come to my office in Kailua uh, over the weekend or in the evenings. I'm also starting to see some clients uh, in ADHD Center in Honolulu and then with another clinical psychologist just to help with those people that need to use the medical plan. I don't take medical plan at this time, uh, but it's very affordable. And anyway, so I first have an intake. I talk to them about their needs, their wants, their main goal. I also do a QEG or quantitative electroencephalogram, which is a brain map. Uh, to see what their signature wave, for example, is it slow or fast, and what part of the brain. If they have fast waves in the frontal lobe or they have slow waves in the frontal lobe, that's going to affect their behavior, their thinking, and their work environment, their life environment, their sleep. So we talk about all that. And then during this session, sessions tend to be one hour, I tend to train them via either electrodes in their brain per se, uh -huh. that they see their brain waves and they start doing things like playing chess or a video game or something to modify their brain waves, or they can, either or, I modify as needed, 
uh, they can have some sensors in their skin to capture, for example, hardware variability, skin conductance, skin, uh, skin resistance, different things that tells me and tells them that they're being stressed or not and how to work on that. Uh, I also have brain stimulation, which is just uh, some sensors here in the cranial area and or music or light that just help with the mood and the brain waves again. Because my goal, I tend to see them once a week for an hour because my goal is that it transfers, just transfer some training, they can actually do this at home. I don't want them to depend on me or my equipment. So it's not always in the clinic. They can go exactly, outside the clinic, exactly. at work, at home. And I give them links that they can find from different places that can retrain their brain, etc. So after like 10 sessions, typically, I do another test, another brain test, and then we'll see the results. And then we talk about if they want to continue more sessions or if they feel comfortable enough, they reach most of their goals of what they wanted, the main goal, and they want to just come like once a month for a booster session or et cetera. So I had the opportunity to come into your office and uh, able to do the neurofeedback, the biofeedback, and the brain stimulation. Now, can you tell me what is the benefit about these three different stage? that a patient get when they come in and go through all the different stages? I think it's mostly be self-conscious, create consciousness about how they feel. Many times, when I was in the military, I was doing clinical research protocols for PTSD, stress management, TBI, traumatic brain injury, et cetera. And a lot of soldiers would tell me, I'm not stressed, and then I would use the blood pressure machine and it would be and way up. Was high. Exactly, so we would practice um, different techniques like uh, diaphragmatic breathing or different things and then later on we'll test them again and the blood pressure will go down so we'll associate that, that's benefits. like the situation when I came in and uh, I told you I was not sleeping and, and we was doing the neurofeedback and you say you're sleepy and but I was denying I was oh, not yes. sleeping but I was really sleepy that's the beauty of this I love technology um, because it gives you the right feedback I can tell you Oh, you're stressed out, or you can tell me you're stressed out, and we can hypothesize about it. However, if I put some system that you can actually see it and gives you feedback about it, then it, it makes you feel more conscientious of what's going on in your life. For example, if you're playing a game, and I'm asking you to, st we agree that we want to be on beta waves or attention in the frontal lobe, and all of a sudden the game is like a spaceship stops working. Uh -huh. You can tell me, oh, the software is not working. I'll be like, no, 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 no. You need to focus more. You know, focus on, on the task. Exactly. So when we was uh, uh, at the office, you mentioned about ADHD in, on a child, and you was talking about it in an adult. What is the correlation between these two? Um, many people do not know. ADHD has a genetic predisposition, meaning it's in our DNA. So. I feel sad but honored at the same time when many, many parents come to my office, to my clinic, and they bring their kids and they basically say, help me or fix them. And I have to politely tell them, you know, there's a high probability that you have some of these symptoms too. And then we start talking about it and many times the clients, my clients, it becomes, the, at the beginning it's the child and later on is half the session, because sometimes I have one hour for both, half session the child, because after 30 minutes they don't want to do anything else, it's enough for them, a lot of in intensity, and then the parents. And then I believe it improves the family dynamic, because they both like kind of understand each other, the parent identify, oh, I, I didn't know I had these symptoms too. Because the Psychiatric Association, American Psychiatric Association, did not come with this diagnosis until around 2013, 2014. Oh, wow. Yes, so a lot of people that have ADHD, like myself, <laughs> uh, uh, we didn't know. We just thought we were clumsy. We we thought we we only heard a lot of negative things about us, and we didn't know it's a neurochemical disorder, just like diabetes. So many times we have to use medication to help us control our thoughts. So the rate is fast, but we can slow down and actually prevent saying or doing something that could be high risk or not needed at that time. We tend to be ADHDers 
very smart. <laughs> However, uh, it's not a disorder. Uh, the gentleman, the psychiat psychiatrist that came up with that name or suggested that name, it made it a disorder. Uh, it's not really a disorder. It's just it's just like selective listening. Like your spouse might just listen to something. It's, just, it's, just it's selective something attention. Like we can know a lot about something and about other things. We don't care. You can take me to a trivia show and I'll I lose because I don't care about a lot of things. But the things that I know, I, I know it to the to the hundredth level. So the, the benefit, what is the benefit coming to your clinic uh, first, going to a regular doctor and give you some medication? I think it's all good because I work with good neurologists like Dr. Liao. I work with good psychologists. I have a, a system. Okay. However, so I'm not... I'm not gonna preach about this is better than this. I think it's, everything's complementary. Matter of fact, I have some clients that sometimes I'm the one suggesting, you know, maybe they should go to your primary doctor or a neurologist or someone that will give you something to, for your child to relax and be able to learn. It could be temporary. So this helps the neurochemistry. Medication does the same thing. So the only difference because between medication and what I'm doing is just that it gives you, puts like a mirror in your face. Okay. So when you're getting upset, just like with the medication, a lot of people just want it to fix something or to numb something. With this, you're actually seeing at the same time and you become more conscientious about it. So it's a complementary uh, system. Now, let me ask you uh, a little bit about your dad. Your, your dad is over 90 years old now. and. Uh, He's showing sign of memory loss and Alzheimer. Can we use uh, this program? That's my dad. Can we use this program uh, for the same thing to help and test and maybe uh, train the brain to be able to get in any good shape? Yes. Uh, the efficacy of neurofeedback, biofeedback, has been very high for a long time for ADHD, but it hasn't been it wasn't being used as much for other categories of groups. Um, you're talking about working with focus. That's focusing is part of cognitive health and it's part of pre-Alzheimer's, etc. My father has tried this too. Uh, uh, the good thing about it is that it gives you feedback to stay focused. The more you practice, it's like the brain is like a muscle. The more you practice focusing, concentration, and memory, the more you're going to prevent this type of um, detrimental or progressive uh, diseases. However, it won't cure it, it won't prevent it completely, but it will help exercise your brain. Oh, wow. So you give them tasks they had to do at home, they had to do uh, at work, any place uh, for the daily life. Yes. So how does it work? You just, after you do uh, the, the, the map, the brain and you identify the issues and then you start assigning different activities so they can do uh, at the clinic when they come in once a week and they also can do it at home as they going back to the regular life right so yes so <laughs> since I'm not a clinical psychologist I'm an organizational psychologist organizational license psychology. which is okay. about school work and peak performance okay. I'm very holistic uh, Therefore, to me, it's all about balance. I don't want the client to believe that I am, that I that I think that the tools is the only, it's the only good thing. thing no, okay. I I don't have to have tools. I just I talk with the clients about how they are feeling at home. Are they sleeping? What time? Know how many hours they sleep? But do they wake up rested? Are they eating healthy? Uh, are they drinking a lot of water, for example? Are they having hobby? Do they work? The school and I correlate all that with their main goal, which could be getting a new job or graduating or whatever. And so their homework is to be conscientious of that, write, they can keep a journal or not, but we will discuss it before every session. Before every session. And the homework is always after the session, so. Oh wow, that's a great program. So we are gonna take a quick break huh? and we're gonna return and we're gonna continue talking about brain training with Dr. Melva Stantz. Thank you.
Aloha and welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We're here talking about brain training with Dr. Melba Stens. So we're having a good time talking about all the different things that we do. And I know you're a very busy person. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about all the stuff that you do besides concentrating and helping those who are stressed, who have PTSD, TBI, and sadness. Oh, well, uh, after almost 30 years in the military, I retired as a lieutenant colonel in 2014, um, doing a lot of work on stress, PTSD, TBI. I realized that I, I was not ready to completely retire. I tried, but I couldn't. <laughs> so <laughs> The energy level was still there, right? Yeah, because um, ADHD, um, and I'm trying to do a call in Hawaii for uh, adults that have ADHD or any ADHD symptom, please call me because I'm trying to make groups and support groups for that because uh, we have, like Greg, Gregory Mason said, we have superpowers. <laughs> superpowers. We have a lot of great stuff. So I do brain tests uh, or electroencephalograms at Castle Medical Center, which is a local hospital. I also teach at uh, HPU to the military campus program about psychology, biopsychology, military psychology, organizational psychology. I also teach for UH Community College, Pearl Harbor, to the, the trainees for the submarine, and I teach them psychology at work, um, and I have my, my clinic. I'm also lately, uh, a few weeks ago, I started with the ADHD Center in Honolulu, so I'm seeing patients over there. So I like staying busy, but at the same time, I've published on work-family conflict, so I try my best to stay with the family, enjoy with the family, my pets, my house, and the beautiful Hawaii. Well, that's so nice to do. Oh, also, you participated uh, for the boxing championship match, and, and you, you was there watching, and you volunteered your time to help those boxers. And tell me a little bit about those people, they, they, they are doing a sport and sometimes uh, they get hit in the head and they really don't take it seriously. Very sad, very sad. My father is a physiatrist. He took care of, I mean, one of his clients was Pele, the soccer player. Yes. And everything that has to be with traumatic brain injury, people do not, oh, we're getting to know, understand, people do not understand completely how important it is, an impact to the brain, even if it's a closed hit or open that you start bleeding, etc. a concussion, a contortion, a, a mild, a more traumatic brain. Anything that hits your brain is going to be a problem. When you see teenagers hitting their lo uh, a locker with the their locker with head, the head, that's bad. That's bad. You can have headaches later on. You can have maybe a minor stroke, and then you're in the floor. I do a lot of, I see a lot of patients at the ICU in, at Castle, and it's because something happened, they ended up in the floor. So, um, boxers, they're always having uh, hits in the head. In the head and yes. I mean, Muhammad Ali is such a brain, such a beautiful person, but ended up having problems with the, the Broca area and the Wernicke area and the brain that has to produce the information, the Broca area. And it's sad because it affects his life. So also, like I said, soccer players, everything that, every sport. Every sport that has some involvement with hitting the head. Yeah, you know. in the military, a lot of soldiers didn't want to wear the helmets or didn't want to hear the, the audio. And that affects your, you know, with tinnitus and a lot of problems happen. So we have to cover ourselves. I know Hawaii is into, you know, the helmet, the motorcycle, et cetera, but I'm saying, Every time you can, wear it, wear it, because it's, it's about your head. So you work with groups, individual, retiree, military, and you do consulting in English and in, in Spanish? Oh, yes, I'm fully bilingual, because I'm Puerto Rican, and my yes. father's Peru, Peruvian, and he lives with us. And I want to help also in Hawaii, I want to help the Hispanic population. So please contact me. I don't know where you are. <laughs> I'm in Kailua. <laughs> so let me ask you one more question here, reference about uh, ADHD, how can you identify when a child has ADHD? Easy. Is, is there any way to identify that? Easy. Uh, for me, that I know what it is, and I see it on my father, full blown, uh, I can sense it right away. But with a map, with a brain map or encephalograph, what I see is the signature mostly theta waves and high beta, meaning super fast, like 20 to 30 hertz a second, and then it goes to a four to eight hertz because it's like doing, doing, doing. The brain is super fast. It's like a motor. It's a change. And then it's, I'm exhausted. 
Is that then, part of the mood swing as well? Yes, yeah, some people said that bipolar, whatever, but yes. The, the brain has so much going on. Okay. I mean, we're talking about Einstein, Will Smith. Uh, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. Yes. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, so many people that are genius. Timberlake, that he sings. John Justin F. Kennedy, Timberlake. yes. John F. Kennedy, president of the United States. Can you believe that? Some presidents have <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> some are medicated, some are not, some are treated, some are underdiagnosed. But anyway, ADHD is a beautiful thing. And my mission is to try to support that as a beautiful thing. Just if schools don't understand ADHD kids, that I'm telling you, see them in the front. Uh, moms, stop giving them anything that excites them after five o'clock. Have them in some type of healthy and safe sport to get the energy out. Let them do what they want, because those are the, the future genius, the engineers. We have a lot of great stuff in the ADHD community. So so like we were talking before, it's a correlation. So sometimes the parent, you were telling me, the parents bring the kids and say, hey, my child have a problem. They don't realize that, that maybe it came genetic, right? Yes. Yeah, so nurture and nature. Okay. The nature would be the genetic predisposition, the okay. DNA, the message that we have in our blood, in our genes, and nurture is the home environment. So if the parents all the time hyper-focusing, that's one of the skills of okay. ADHD, hyper-focusing five, six hours, and they don't go to the bathroom, they don't eat, they don't anything. Just concentrate on one thing. Yes, and then the child does it, and the father is like, the parent is like, hey, you need to stop doing that. You're giving them a mixed message because you're doing it, but, uh, but you're not letting your child do it. So once we have more knowledge about, hey, it's a family thing, it's neurochemical, we might need some medication, we might know, we might need some brain training through feedback, or we might have to do take other tools to help us, then I've seen so many families improving and being happier because of that. So then you take into the clinic as a family, that's when you do group, you do group sessions. Yes. So you can do the mom, yes. the dad, yeah. you can do all together. The spouse suffer a the lot. The spouse. Uh, you can ask my husband. They suffer a lot because they don't know. They don't know that you have like, like, like five monitors open because you have five boxes, five projects open and they don't know sometimes how to connect the dots. For you it makes sense, but for them it's like, what? So it's a retraining the spouse, it's really explaining the, 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 the spouse what's going on, the children, the mom, the school, the worker. Like when I go to Castle, I like working, when I'm doing my, my analysis, I like being in the corner, not being interrupted because I get distracted. So I put all my energy, my brain power into, into that. So my typical bosses, they love me because every time they ask me for projects, I'm like, Shh. Right there. <laughs> exactly. So let's talk about PTSD, just a little bit about PTSD. You know, ex-soldiers, and um, we was deployed many, many, many times, and then we return home. How the, the whole symptom of PTSD work? It, it is so difficult to understand. Yeah, I'm not gonna deny it that I have symptoms of PTSD, and I've been uh, treated. Uh, I think it's very important to know that that's another invincible, invincible wound. I was thinking in Spanish. Another invincible, invisible wound, meaning that people cannot see it, but it hurts us at many levels. And actually, a lot of people that have ADHD, which is part of what I'm putting on my new website, a lot of people that have ADHD, they can have PTSD symptoms because they've been bullied. Okay. And they've been told since little, you're a mess up. You can't do that because ADHD is considered also a learning disability. True. Because we learn at the beginning, when I learn something, I look retarded. People are like, it's a whole different she's way retarded. To something. Once I learn it, it's get out of my way. Get out of my way because I know what you know and what they know and you know what I'm saying? So, yes. so a lot of ADHD, they, they end up having PTSD symptoms because it's traumatic. The whole life they've been treating them like bad. And then once they realize everything, then they have to forgive, forget, move on, but it's very painful. Very painful. Wow, so is anybody want to get in contact with you to, uh, one way they can get in contact. I'll tell you. Yeah. The only signature about PTSD that I failed to mention is anger, frustration. frustration. And that's what the society, medication or training or tools can help ameliorate that. They can contact me at AOA 347-4626. They can text me, AOA 347-4626. Or go to my website. Your website, yeah. Yeah, my old waves, website was bythewaveshawaii.com, but I'm changing it to biofeedback 
therapyhawaii.com with the help of Ben and Patrick. All right. Well, we want to say, I want to say thank you so much for coming to Hispanic Hawaii and help us to understand how all our brain work mm. and what we need to do to keep our brain in a good shape. And then we want to say thank you so much. Any final thoughts? Please, ADHDers, adults, contact me. And if you have some PTSD, military, and you want to keep it confidential, contact me. I'm here to help you. Thank you. All right. Don't forget, uh, we're here in Hispanic Hawaii with Dr. Melba Stenz. Uh, she is a licensed psychology and a brain trainer. And if you need to get in contact with her, you can call 808-347-4626. And we're going to return with Hispanic Hawaii for the next show. And those who miss the show, don't forget, you can go to Think Tech Hawaii. Dark on. And we want to say thank you. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can call me 808-256-3802. Or you can send me a tweet at RichardConception on Twitter.com. Thank you so much. Gracias and aloha. <laughs>